It's death, it's destruction. Global news impacts us. We have to change the way we live. This is why we need independent media. Cheers, one and all, and salutations. Welcome to another episode of Hard Lens Media. And you know what? It's time to for us to have a conversation, a conversation about raising the ruckus, because let's face it, this election cycle, it is once again going to be somewhat of a repeat of the same tactics that we see from the vote blue, no matter who sickle fans. That's right. We saw them in 2016 and 2020. You got to vote Democrat because of the orange Cheeto man. Now, if you've been watching my show, you know damn well that I'm not going to support any Democratic politician or Republican politician. And I think it's long overdue that we call out these lawmakers for the jagoffs that they are because they don't like us, they don't think about us, they don't respect us. If these politicians really gave a damn about us, they wouldn't be going through the raw sewage waste of bureaucracy just to uh, enrich themselves while all the while crapping on us at the same time. You see, these lawmakers don't care about us, and we need... To bring a voice to the voiceless. And I'm proud to return back onto our show. Somebody who has been told by AOC herse herself. That he is very rude. <laughs> Why are you so freaking rude, Jose? Huh? That's, Why are you so goddamn butt. rude? I'm sorry. You know what? Maybe I should go up to her and apologize next time. You know, you, for, you know for what? Doing that. You know what? Uh, I, I challenge you to just say, hey, AOC... I'm sorry that you, you know, think I'm being rude. I'm sorry for my outburst. It's just you are a sellout and a hack fraud, and someone needs to call you out. You said you were going to raise the ruckus. So I'm sorry that you are sorry. <laughs> I'm very, I'm actually really uh, interested to see what she does uh, when Assange gets extradited over here. Uh, uh, yeah, you know. well, well, the thing is, okay, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Because the thing is, what we've what we've seen firsthand here is something very interesting. Because I'm glad you brought up Assange, I because that, that was going to be part of this conversation. But uh, let's go ahead, get all right off of the bat to it. Uh, this is the first time ever uh, we're seeing a judge dictate to an administration that they're not allowed to speak to social media. I don't know if you've seen this or not, but uh, we covered this on yesterday's show, and I was on uh, RBN Revolutionary Blackout Network uh, last night. And uh, we were talking about the fact that uh, a federal judge has ruled that the Biden-Harris administration should not be in contact with social media giants like Twitter, Facebook, all of them, uh, because obviously we've seen firsthand from the Twitter files and even from Mark Zuckerberg's own admission on Joe Rogan's show that there were government agencies dictating to these two social media platforms not to share the Hunter Biden laptop story. And now this Democratic administration is being told by a federal judge. And again, there's more procedures that be happening forwards because, again, this is still a developing story. Don't be in contact with social media. I mean, holy cow. I, I never thought I'd see that. Yeah, no, that's pretty good, actually. Uh, uh, and I think also part of that story was they said that they found extreme overreach of the executive branch in social media companies and like, you know, that they were making a concerted effort to suppress and censor voices online precisely uh, yeah that's actually a well i i you have to, it's see the thing is these federal judges were appointed back when trump was president right exactly and it's like a good thing happens but not for the right reason you know uh, i'm happy that they're doing it right yeah but at the same time like it's not a principled position it's just an anti-biden position now in one sense maybe that is a principled position right to be anti-biden but the thing is when you have a judge like that only rejecting stuff that biden is doing and then if you get trump again then they're going to start you know doing stuff that we would completely disagree with right and exactly it gives you this very reactionary judge or court or whatever and you don't actually get to have what you want there's no principle behind it it's all just like party politics so sometimes you might get what you want but most of the time it's not it's not on on any kind of like you know guided whatever and that's the problem with these rulings so i'm happy the ruling happened i don't mm -hmm. hold my breath that this federal judge will always consistently uphold the the constitution it's just whatever you know, is it Biden did, we'll do the opposite. 
Well, I, I, again, go, kind of going forward on that, because um, this is something that CJ and I uh, talked about on Revolution Blackout Network, and that is, look, I have given the opportunity, and this this goes out to Republican and Trump voters. If given opportunity, your politicians would enact the same censorship policies as the Democratic lawmakers did, uh, especially when they were very close and in connection yeah. with Twitter and Facebook. And this is before Twitter was bought by Elon Musk. So uh, I, I expect the same actions by both parties in regards to censor, censor, censor. And again, I'm very adamant in this fact. It's not a belief. It's a fact. Quoting George Carlin, it's one big club and you ain't in it. Both parties are owned by corporate donors, Wall Street, big banks, the top 1%, hedge fund managers. OK, this isn't anything new. And what the average voter, I think a lot of people are maybe starting to wake up to, but uh, I think still are ignorant to, unfortunately, and need to be educated about this. And that is, again, you, the average voter, do not have a say in regards to how policy is dictated. Politicians like an abusive uh, spousal partner will lie to you hit you, beat you, assault you, and then put on the face saying, I promise I will never hit you again if you just support me this time and things are going to be great. Um, censorship happens a lot. but And, and not to mention, when, when given the power, both parties will enact censorship. But something that has really kind of, again, captured my attention, and uh, this is something that Vote Blue, no matter who voters need to take to heart and understand extremely well, when we started Hard Lens Media before, you know, RBN or 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 anybody else came around before you came around on social media, um, you know, the censorship was there. But after 2020, it intensified to a level like I have never seen it before to where under the Biden Harris administration, we got censored and suppressed eight times. And thankfully, YouTube and its big brained algorithm was able to get things wrong in regards to uh, how they were flagging our videos. And again, I don't wish that on anybody. And those who are in support of censorship, who think that their party's better, just remember, it's only a matter of time before you put in that chopping block. Um, but I, I want to get your thoughts on really now how AOC, who is everybody's favorite New York representative, is uh, <laughs> once again leading the charge and blowing the horn for saying, oh, we got to rally. We got to work together to help the Democrats and support Biden. I mean, let's face it. I, I know that you have had a few run ins with the Democratic lawmakers, most notably AOC. Um, your thoughts on overall this this uh, message of theirs that Biden's our guy again. We got to help the senile old man. Your thoughts. Yeah, well, I got to thank Indie Net News Network because they went into some squad meeting in D.C. where the yes. tickets were like $100 or so. And, uh, uh, you know, Jamal Bowman, who's sitting next to Rashida Tlaib, Ilhan Omar, Cory Bush, and AOC, is saying how we need to get this old man across the finish line. Mm -hmm. And even I don't understand what the, what, what the game plan is here because I'm in a difficult position, you know. People say they're frauds and that they are cowards. They are, totally are. The squad sucks. At the same time, I happen to believe that people are redeemable, especially the younger people. People like Nancy Pelosi are way too old and way too ingrained in it. They've just become it, right? But I genuinely believe that the squad can change their minds. And so when I really, see this, I... Wow. I do. That is, I do. That, okay, then you are a better man than me. Holy cow. I, I'll, I'll, I, I'll give you that. I'll tip my hat off to you. You're a better man no, than me. No, I, I acknowledge their <laughs> flaws. I acknowledge their cowardness. I acknowledge the fact that they see the thing is um you have to you have to see AOC as like this woman who, in my opinion, I know she was a senator or uh, she was an intern for for Ted Kennedy. Uh, I know, you know, she had some run-ins with intelligence services even before she was ever a congresswoman. Um, and so there, the whole bartender to Congress story is is a lie. Yeah, but I do is. believe there was some genuine part of her that, and this is true for the whole squad, Jamal Bowman was a school principal, that before they were in power, they probably did want to actually seriously cause a ruckus, right? That interview that AOC did with Glenn Greenwald, where she said, yes, we're going to free Assange. We're going to cause a ruckus. We're going to upset the establishment. We may not vote for Nancy Pelosi. We'll withhold our vote. I do think that was her being genuine. And then I think um, 
the moment she became in power, they had to corrupt her. It just had to happen. And so I don't think anybody is truly evil. I just think that she thinks her best avenue is to continue to play ball with the Democratic Party. And in the beginning, she had to make moral concessions like, okay, uh, I don't want to do this, but um, I'll do it if it means later on in the road I can get what we need to better fix things, right? And over time, that just mounted up and bundled up until it wore on her to the point where she's completely given up her initial beliefs as to what she can do and has just become a pawn for the establishment. And maybe the way she justifies this is like, well, look, the Congress is better with me and my friends, the squad, in it than it would be without it. Because if we weren't in it, you know, saying the things that the Democrats, you know, need to hear, then there would be somebody worse than us. That's a terrible excuse. That's But that's what I think she uses to justify the fact that she is a, just another pawn. What it is, is I believe is that if her or anybody in the squad started to speak up against the Ukrainian war, even if they push just a little pushback, more than that stupid letter they put out back in November. Yeah, because, because there was that letter and all of them were quick to flip-flop on that. All it of them just were. It takes one of them to just say, you know what, this has gone too far. The Zaporozhye nuclear power plant is going to put us into nuclear war and this has to stop, that can change the tide of everything. And what that means is she would have to sacrifice, or one of them would have to sacrifice her congressional seat. They're not going to see it again. That's the price they'd have to pay to speak the truth, and they don't want to do that. But I do believe, you know, I had this plan, like, if we had 200 people go into an AOC town hall, if we could organize 200 people to go into an AOC town hall, and then everybody just stand up, and somebody in the crowd announces to her that if she switches from the Democratic Party to independent, that all of these people here would be willing to organize and canvas for her and make sure she sees her seat again if she leaves the Democratic Party. And if she doesn't, then all of those people are going to make sure that her opponent, who's running as an independent, will take the seat for instead of her. And that would be like, you know, an ultimatum right there. Right. Like, do you and, want the and, power of the people or of the Democratic Party in order to do something of that magnitude? I mean, if you really want to resonate to where it's buzzing on social media. And again, we're just sh I'm shooting off the hip here. OK, because, sure, yeah, again, yeah, yeah. I, I again, I got to give a huge shout out to people like you or Rome or Misty Winston, who I, I like to call the dauntless few, your colleague, uh, uh, Keenan, the, the dauntless few. And what I mean oh. by that is, you know, um, and what I mean by dauntless few is that you're the few activists who I've seen have follow through and actually really make an impact and cause a conversation and have people to talk about not only on social media, but in real life, too, about really the hypocrisy of our lawmakers. And we need more of that. And what I see from a lot of activists all, all together is it's more of, OK, we got to protest Trump, maybe push Democrats. We did the rally. Let's all go home. But I would go further in, in saying, like, if you were to make something that might to bring to AOC's attention, it's either got to be in a in an arena where there's more than 100 people, like maybe I don't know, I'm shooting off the hip here, maybe a thousand people there and everyone's in agreement. Like, OK, and it's hard to get a, a people to in, in into agreement. But if you really make the, the sign to AOC, like, hey, look, we're with you. OK, because, OK, let's, let's let's say let's say AOC feels alone. Let's say these all the squad members just feel uh, alone and overwhelmed and they didn't maybe realize what they were getting themselves into. Then maybe there's that one last best shot saying, hey. We like what you guys tweet about. You're not doing anything in the Democratic Party. It's time to leave it. And you have those people's support. But again, on the on the other hand, too, my cynical mind, I'm just so burnt out by politics, too. Because, I mean, let's face it, sometimes I'm burnt out by electoral politics. Mm -hmm. I, I look at these people and I'm like, OK, well, you're in the system. You're comfortable. Five years of AOC and it's nothing but mediocre stuff, man. Well, that's why you have to humiliate. I just sent you something via Twitter DM if you, if you okay. want to put it up. It's a poster that uh, yeah, Greg, sure. Greg, uh, his big mad crab on on Twitter. He's part of the INN network. He he helped design this poster. Um, then then the, the yellow one I made that one. But this AOC war poster. Hopefully, I hope you can put this. Yeah. Up sometime. Let me let uh, me let me go ahead and get there real quick. Here we go. Here we go, because I got because I got a couple of tweets here. So hold on. 
Let me go sure. ahead and share this with the people. And I've seen this image here before. Uh, but I think I think it's I think it's a work of art. Hey, hey, I'll see. I got that new campaign poster you wanted. <laughs> More. So you know, I'm not making excuses for the squad at all. I think you have to humiliate them. You have to you have to you know do what Kynan and I did and really have your voice heard. But there is something specific to the squad is that I think it does mess with their minds when you do this kind of stuff. Like this poster, I think, is really effective. Greg did a great job because I don't think AOC went into the Congress thinking, OK, I'm going to be a warmonger and I'm going to be responsible for the military industrial complex getting what it wants. Nobody goes into Congress thinking that. Yeah, I, you know, I, I believe that. Right. I know some people think, no, this was always her role. I, I don't. Um, and so now she's become, like I said, the thing she sought to fight against. Right. And so. I think this poster, which, by the way, we're raising money because we want to print this to post around her district. Um, it was like one hundred fifty dollars for for fifty of these posters. Where, uh, where, where, where can? By the way, do you have a link to where if people want to help donate and volunteer, where they can go? Uh yes. Uh, if people want it, well, they can. They can either. Uh, I have I have Venmo, Cash App, and then I have my Patreon. Mm -hmm. If people just want to help volunteer, put these up when we get them, they can just DM me on Twitter. Okay, that fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So hold on. Let me go ahead and pull up your social media account here then real quick. So that way people sure. know. Uh, again, this is uh, Jose Vegas. Uh, uh, <laughs> Hose B. Trigger. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe so I'll put be, my yeah, so, here. Yeah, so. So be sure to follow him on Twitter. Let's uh, go ahead and pull up that image again. Again, again, look, it, it really, it really hits home because when you see, you know, what happened, especially with the war that's taking place in Ukraine, AOC is just so invested into the Democratic talking points. I, I, I want to have hope that maybe she sees what she's doing. Um, but then again, too, e even if I were to have a conversation with her. I don't think she has the ability to really self-reflect on how far she has come in regards to being in the political sphere here in the United States. I mean, I remember her saying not only on Glenn Greenwald's show, but even on the Jimmy Dore show and even on TYT back in she the day. She was on Jimmy Dore? Yeah, yeah, no, she was interviewed by Jimmy Dore back in the oh, day. Oh, like, when he was on TYT. No, no, oh. not only when he was on TYT, but this is also when he started doing his own show on the oh. Jimmy Dore show specifically. This wow. was like twenty this was like twenty eighteen. So he was he was still with TYT at the time, but uh, when AOC was running, uh he interviewed her too. Yeah, this is this that's that don't don't ever bring that up to AOC because she was on Jimmy Dore's show. Um <laughs> I but, guess uh, I can give you guys some like little insider stuff. Yeah in January. Uh, because, go ahead, go ahead, um, go ahead. In January of 2023, right? So this was a couple months after we did the intervention on her. Kynan actually went to another town hall of hers. And that was the town hall where Lucy, uh, you know, stood up and spoke in Spanish, right? And yeah. Went after her in Spanish and stuff. And that went viral. Afterwards, Kynan was allowed to go up to AOC. So what AOC does at our town hall, sometimes, not always, um, is that she will have like a little meet and greet, right? So people will line up to, you know, shake her hand and talk to her, whatever. Kynan went up to her and she didn't initially recognize him. And she, and he said, we have a recording of this. Um, oh, wow. We're going we're gonna to put together a little montage. But Kynan went up to her and said, listen, you know, uh, I don't know if you recognize me, but my friend Jose and I confronted you back in October um, on this war question and listen, you know, I'm coming to you not today to yell at you or in, uh, in, as an enemy, but I genuinely want to have a dialogue with you. And that's when we invited her to come on declaring independence. And we even set the terms where we said, look, we'll pre-record it and mm -hmm. we'll send you the recording before we post it. And she was totally down to do it. And then she also said, like, wait a minute, what? She was totally wow. down to do it. I, I swear. She said she would do it. And then Kynan was telling her, look, uh, you know, this whole war drive, and then now they're trying to do war with China. And then she told him, yeah, no, we're to totally against war with China. We, in fact, tra voted against some kind of uh, resolution to denounce China. And she said, look, I'd love to, to talk to you. Um, and then she's like, she got her communications director to come over. She's like, they'll, they'll set it up. Just shoot her an email. We'll talk on these terms. Well, lo and behold, Kynan sends out the email 
nothing comes back. We sent out another one. Nothing comes back, right? Mind you, Kynan is the nice one, all right? I'm I'm the I'm the mean one, all right? And like oh, so, and, and he, so so good cop, bad cop. <laughs> yeah, and you see here, like even then, I'm still look. I made this, you know, the, these posters for the AOC war thing. Okay, I shit on her constantly, and I and the reason I do is because sometimes you have to spank. You know, there there can be no deep disappointment where there is no deep love. That's a quote by Dr. King, right? It's like the reason we're disappointed, and you know, I think all the former B Bernie people are disappointed is because she was also popped up by Bernie, right? And we mm -hmm. thought, okay, maybe this is like our last saving grace. And so AOC got swept up in that too. Anyway, uh, all that to say like, yeah, no, she didn't come on. And was that because she was just talking kind and zero off saying, yeah, no problem. Or was that because her team said, are you stupid? You can't go on their show. They're going to ambush you. They're going to sabotage you. They're going to, you know, come at you. No, it's going to be unfair because this is mm -hmm. a woman whose PR team is so intense right there's nothing she she has no autonomy when it comes to her social media maybe she's allowed to post that i'm going to yoga you know thing right i have no idea why she even posted that goddamn image i mean seriously or even then doing that video saying oh yoga kicked my butt and i gotta kick my butt and we all gotta kick and i'm like what 30 seconds i have no idea what you're talking about aoc kick what you're a lawmaker people are starving in the streets yeah, no cares yeah. about yoga right now. And I don't want people to get the idea that we should suck up to politicians. I do, no, I don't. I, look, I know in this day and age, it's hard to understand nuance because everything is so literal these days. And look, yes, continue to yell at your politicians and not even that, but go out in the street. I mean, you know, one of the things that also goes viral on my Twitter is not just the interventions, but when I went up to Boston and I had the signs that said, like, you know, Biden is the Nord Stream bomber, like people really resonated with that. That had like 3,000 likes or so. I was like so mm -hmm. surprised by that. Like, wow, you know, people actually like to see street activism uh, in in play here. Like that, that stuff is exactly what works. And so the reason I keep bringing up the squad is, is not because I think that they are secretly heroes. It's mm -hmm. that they're going to react to what you do. And unless you are louder and unless you can organize better than their PR teams and better than their communications teams, they will not ever respond to you. So you have to be louder because you have to expose it's okay. It's a nuanced idea because they are the people who claim to be the raising the ruckus, right? Like Jamal Bowman was with the Teamsters the other day for the UPS union strike, right? Yeah, and, um, and that's good to see. That is really good to see. No, it is good to see, right? But they think that that's enough. They think that that's all they have to do, right? And then that, that qualifies them as like revolutionary congressmen or something like that. When in reality, they, they actually have no power in the Congress whatsoever, right? None at all. Um, in fact, the only times they ever vote against something that's bad is when they know they have the minority vote. That's the only time they ever make a grandstand about some bill. For example, the Syria bill, right? The Matt Gates bill where, you know, we mm -hmm. pull out our troops from Syria. The only time they ever said like, yeah, we need to get our troops out of Syria was when they knew they weren't going to get the votes to, to pass this fucking thing. Like, yeah. that's it. That's the only time. And also the, what was the last thing? Um, uh, the budget, the budget bill, right? The, the, the ceiling mm -hmm. bill, right? No, you know, oh, we need to vote against this. It doesn't meet our terms. Ah, they knew they didn't have the votes. They knew they didn't have the votes to get their way. So they're allowed to be, you know, um, loud. And then um, on that Syria thing, too, you know about this guy, Maxwell Frost, who's like a 26-year-old, 27-year-old congressman in Florida? Yes, yes. I've I've heard about him and how he infiltrated a lot of pro-Palestinian groups and then gave and them then the he middle became, finger. Yeah, right. So he ran his platform on anti-gun violence. But when it came to the Matt Gates bill to get our troops out of Syria, he voted against it to keep our troops in Syria. So I guess he's okay with gun violence as long as it's a Syrian child getting shot in the face, but not a Floridian child. Like, but the but the thing is, here's my here's my other here's my, the bigger point is that that's the initial reaction, but I don't think Maxwell knows what he's voting on. I don't think any of these people really know what they're voting on. They're just told, hey, what am I voting for? Yes, no, no, okay, no. 
Yeah. Macron doesn't know what the hell he's voting for. He's just told what to vote for. You could, you, you, we could go even further is that not only a lot of them uh, don't know what they're voting for, they don't ask questions. Okay, hey, team, what are we doing? Are we voting yes on this? No. Everyone's – the coach is saying vote no on it. Okay, great. Everyone does it. No one's a maverick. No one thinks – and again, I, I, I kind of bring this up here too, and uh, this isn't meant to be disrespecting to wrestling, but, I mean, a lot of these storylines or arcs that we see in Washington, D.C., these feuds – Almost are on par with something what you would see in WWF or WCW or ECW, you know? And yes, mm -hmm. I'm going to call it WWF because I'm old school, okay? I'm old school, folks. <laughs> so, you know, I think the, the point here is is you can't rely on the politicians to do your bidding. No. But at the same time, they do have the power to do something if they wanted to, but they're not going to unless you do it first. That's agreed. I guess like the roundabout, like, you know, thing here, because if they actually did decide to do something, they would lose their seats. That's it. That's, that's the price they'd have to pay. And so anyway, I, <laughs> I think we've yeah. exhausted this, this option. I'm sure, you know, yeah. I've, uh, yeah. No, no, I, controversial, I, but. I, I, I hear you. I hear you, especially in regards towards calling out these politicians. So uh, and I know that obviously uh, you guys are one hour ahead of us in New York and you're doing a lot of great things here. And I do appreciate you took some time out of your day because I know, again, we, we talked a little bit before the show. So you got you have a couple of projects that you're working on. So first of all, on behalf of my audience, uh, we would like to see that little one on one conversation between uh, Kynan and AOC when that video does come. Uh, available we would like to see that I if it happens i mean if, yeah if, if 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 it does happen and then number two all the best on some of your future projects that you'll be working on today and uh, a little bit later this week as well so um if in, in regards to where people could follow you and uh support your work where can they go because obviously you have been a voice for the voiceless and somebody who has taken the initiative you and your team uh you kind and your team uh, have been able to do something that we've wanted to see for a very long time, and that is bring accountability to the squad, which is long overdue. Where, where can people go to follow you guys on social media? People can find us on Twitter at Hosby Trigger. People mm -hmm. can also follow Kynan at N O G G A T O N E, mm -hmm. Nogaton, right? That's And also, uh, we've become very active on our YouTube channel recently, uh, youtube.com slash declaring independence. Um, let me go we, ahead and pull up that channel. It's Declaring Independence. Yes, that's, that's the name of it. Let me go ahead. Yep, yep, yep. We've uh, we've we've started doing live streams with all sorts of people now, uh, left and right, up and down, libertarian and communist. It's been great. I I absolutely loved it. Uh, and we also just put out a documentary on Victoria Newland, chapter one, two, and three, which is pretty good. Uh, I, if I don't, if you know. I know I was recently on your show, but I, I I will say this. I'll be more than happy to come back on. Here's their YouTube channel, uh, Declaring Independence. So, look, folks, they're at 3,000 subscribers. I, I'm offended. That should be at 10K right now. And <laughs> well, I appreciate that. No, we, we just we only just started like last month, actually. You know, I, fair enough. After, you know, after the AOC thing, um, I had. My grandfather got really sick. I was going through a breakup mm -hmm. and dealing with the the fame of yeah the, life you know, life it was, life does play a role. I was I was pretty depressed actually, you know, because I felt this responsibility like ah everything I do is going to be criticized and judged now, whereas before I didn't have that, mm. and it takes some getting used to. So you know, but uh, well, after the rage against the war machine and and stuff, I felt so much more revitalized and happy that there are people who support me. And so, you know, I, uh, I just hope that, you know, look, if there's anything you take away from this interview is mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter what any politician does. What matters is what you're about to do. That's, yes. that's what matters. And don't put your faith in people, uh, to change, compel them to change. That's, that's, I guess what I was been trying to say this whole time. So, you know. I, I, I want to say this, man, look, you've handled yourself in a very professional manner. Uh, I'm very impressed with the growth of your network and how consistent you've been uh, been in regards towards uh, collaborating with other content creators, but also being consistent. So, uh, look, I know what it's like when real life reels its ugly head into work and business and so much more. But uh, I think compared to others, um, many others would break and you stood strong. 
And well, I think uh, I think my audience and I can all come to agreement. Uh, you have really set a standard that we all can follow on. So thumbs up to you. And uh, I urge everyone to please follow Jose and Kynan, follow their work, support them on social media. You know, we say we want people to speak truth to power. Jose, Kynan, your team, you are the dauntless few. So never give up and don't stop what you're doing. I appreciate the time uh, that you gave me to be on my show. Uh, I would love to be back on your show again when you have some time as well. But also more importantly, folks. You free uh, tomorrow? Um, I think so. What time? What time? Uh, I have to double check my schedule. So let me just check that. But we can get that situated. I'll, I'll DM you. I'll DM you. Great. No problem. Then if that can be done, done deal. But also number two, folks, uh, again, now more than ever, we have to fight for that better future. Jose, keep on doing the great work. And uh, we will continue on with the rest of our main show. No See problem. I'm going to go sniff some uh, booger sugar. Is <laughs> <laughs> I know CJ t- uh, is borrowing that word, too, from RBN. That, yes, we will be talking about Hunter Biden in a little bit in the main show. So uh, take it easy on the booger sugar, my friend. <laughs> okay. All the best, take- folks. Gorillas in the mist, skin suits in the center. Water in the streets, chest deep like it's Venice. Water out of tap and Jackson comes blacker than resin. Black incidentally like most of its residents, which is why it isn't on your television, isn't on the lips of your president. Well, I'm admitting that is evidence. I've been fleshing out a case to be made for the testament. I don't know what our collateral count is, but doubt it is less than the estimate. You just show us a hospital, watch as we dressed in it. Our propaganda gets taken to heart, and you're scarfing it, like it or not. If you think that you aren't, I would urge you to pick that apart. Cause you're drinking it, smoking it, driving it, dressed in it. We pay for it, pray to it, bathe in it, fill up the basin, and babies are blessed in it. (laughs) Ask no questions, bask in the pestilence. See, honey, when the plague goes live, you'd be wise to invest in it. See, honey, when the plague goes live, just between you and I, that's an industry sign that they're all done testing it. And come 2025, they will all be confessing it. And then a few small fry fall guys all fly from the precipice Who were doomed to be wasted like shell corporations Dissolving to vapor then gone with the resonance Gone with the sense and the sentiments Gone with the dust of the remnants Gone with the ghosts of the regiment Gone like those families in Gaza Whose bodies and homes are demolished When Israel sets up a settlement Gone like your chance at a settlement Gone like the hope of apologies Out of those funding our deadliest research And backroom development Gone like your shot at a measly I'm sorry From the mouths of our own bioterrorists God, you cannot imagine the face of the monster You can't even fathom the scale of its carapace It's under your feet, yet you're barely aware of it You see it's quietly judging the scope of your suffering, sizing you up like a therapist. Then it rides in your guts like a parasite, growing in size and excreting a culture that's purely embarrassment. Equal parts Manson and Marilyn, equal parts something we push into madness and something we'll gladly exploit and objectify 50 years after it perishes. Carefully crafted and planned and arranged like a monarchy's marriages. <laughs> Fucking cousins or otherwise, scourge of the colonized, staged and displayed for the sake of retaining those imperial barracks. And all to expedite a special type of anglicized dysplasia. 
The kind where half the world is waking up to learn they're being raided, raped, and robbed of all their heritage by Charles and his caravan of 30 servants' carriages. The kind where each in the procession is worth infinitely less, till eventually they're paid in sums of crown-approved disparagement and bonuses of shame till they're finally told to thank the highest ranking inbred pig named king of every garrison one who rose into his power all immaculate like harris did well now that garishness is melting down like paraffin that hardens in a shell and shelters terrified and threatened royal terrapin those that rule with zero question although nobody elected it Democracy was here till we dissected it. Democracy was here until the exhibition exodus. And the loss of that democracy is just a threat for those who've yet to recognize the scent of bait or know the taste of desiccants. Democracy was here and now the smear is all that's left of it. Democracy was here and now the smear is all that's left of it. Mother and baby on razor's edge. Don't give a shit what your paper said. Economy creeping up out of red. Cause they give me a shitty little bit of bread. Miles away from that lady's ledge. Her senator wake and he's safe and fed. They ain't got the paper to read in bed. Jerking him off as they come to death. Mother and baby on razor's edge. Don't give a shit what your paper said. Economy creeping up out of red. Cause they give me a shitty little bit of bread. Miles away from that lady's ledge. Her senator wake and he's safe and fed. They ain't got the paper to read in bed. Jerking him off as they come to death. Mother and baby on razor's edge. They don't give a shit what your paper said. Economy creeping up out of red. As they give you a shit a little bit of bread And miles away from that lady's ledge Her senator waking, he's safe and fed He got the paper to read in bed Jerking him off as he count the dead Mother and baby on razor's edge Don't give a shit what your paper said The economy creeping about a rat As they give you a shit a little bit of bread And miles away from that lady's ledge Her senator waking, he's safe and fed He got the paper to read in bed Jerking him off as he count the dead Mother and baby on razor's edge They don't give a shit what your paper said The economy creeping about a rat As they give you a shit a little bit of bread And miles away from that lady's ledge Her senator waking, he's safe and ain't got a paper to read in bed Shirking them off to count the dead Senator Wiggy, safe in bed. Hey,